Hello and welcome. To the viewers of this video, this is the orange fan here bringing you another entry for the episode recap and thoughts category. This video will be dedicated to the B segment of episode 65 of The Loud House, What Would Lincoln Do? We begin this segment at Royal Woods Elementary School, where we see Agnes Johnson explaining to the students in her classroom that this week's topic will be woodworking. This causes Lincoln to panic, and he admits to Clyde that woodworking isn't one of his talents. Lincoln also lists off a few fear-like symptoms that occur when Lincoln tries to perform woodworking. Clyde shows sympathy towards Lincoln, and Clyde admits that this reminds him of his own experiences when it comes to trying to blow up balloons. We then see a quick flashback which shows Clyde being taken into an ambulance after he tried to blow up a balloon. A little while later, uh, the next scene takes us to the Loud House, and we see Lincoln is inside the garage looking over the blueprints for the woodworking project. One of the symptoms that Lincoln uh, described earlier occurs, and Lincoln ends up becoming unconscious. A little while later, Rita notices Lincoln unconscious, and she rushes to her son to see if he's okay. Rita then wonders if maybe Lincoln is just plain dead with Lucy. Lincoln then regains consciousness, and he admits to his mom that he lost consciousness a little while ago uh, because he has to build a step stool uh, for a woodworking project. Rita is aware of the fact that woodworking isn't one of Lincoln's talents, but when Rita looks over the blueprints, Rita says that the step stool doesn't look too difficult and offers to help Lincoln out. Lincoln is grateful that his mom is willing to help him with this woodworking project, and Lincoln shows Rita uh, the materials that he has for this woodworking project. Rita, though, comments along the lines about how pine wood isn't suitable for building a step stool, and she says that they're going to acquire some hardwood and Lincoln is surprised to hear that there are different types of wood. So a little while later, Lincoln and Rita have arrived at a hardware store called Shoulda, Coulda, Woulda, and uh, Lincoln and Rita proceed to enter this hardware store, and Rita acquires not just hardwood, uh, but she also acquires um, some items for some other projects that she's planning. Lincoln then notices that there are some step stools for sale, and Lincoln wonders, uh, why don't they just uh, buy a step stool uh, that's already made? But Rita says that they're going to go about this woodworking project the proper way, actually building a step stool. So later on, uh, we're back at the Loud House. In the garage, Rita is giving Lincoln some instructions about how to build a step stool. But Lincoln's attempts to follow these uh, instructions are not successful, to say the least. Eventually, Rita offers to just build the step stool, and Lincoln can observe Rita building the step stool, and Rita figures that after Lincoln observes uh, her, Rita, building the step stool, Lincoln will know how to um, complete any other woodworking projects that may occur in the future. So the next scene takes us to the next day, um, we're back at Royal Woods Elementary School, and Agnes Johnson is inspecting the step stools of some of the students in the classroom. Um, uh, for the most part, um, yes, it looks like, um, yes, for the most part, um, the step stools built by the students um, look like that they struggled. Or yes, for the most part, it looks like most of the students were struggling to build these uh, step stools. Um, the step stool that Rita built uh, is the only, shall we say, professional-looking step stool. And Agnes Johnson is impressed, not realizing that Rita was the one that built the step stool, not Lincoln. And Clyde also uh, doesn't realize that Rita was the one who built the step stool, 
When Lincoln uh, returns to his seat, Clyde congratulates um, uh, Lincoln. Uh, yes, Clyde figures that Lincoln overcame his fears, and Clyde admits that he wants to try and uh, blow up a balloon now. But Lincoln whispers to Clyde that the truth of the matter is that Rita was the one that built the step stool. Agnes Johnson then proceeds to uh, inform the class that there will be a second woodworking project. Uh, this second project will be uh, building uh, birdhouses. Agnes admits that uh, birdhouses are more challenging to build compared to step stools, but Agnes is confident in uh, the students. Uh, yes, Agnes is confident that the students will be able to um, build these uh, birdhouses. And Lincoln begins to panic having to do another uh, woodworking project. So later on, uh, Lincoln has returned to the Loud House, and Rita is staining the uh, dining room table. Uh, Lincoln has, uh, uh, yes, Lincoln enters the room, and he gives his mom a flippy. Uh, Lincoln says that um, the flippy is his way of thanking Rita for helping him with the uh, step stool. And uh, Lincoln also brings up that there's a, um, a birdhouse uh, project um, now. Or yes, Lincoln says that um, there's a second project involving um, building a birdhouse. And Lincoln is wondering if Rita would be willing to help him out again. Rita, though, says that um, Lincoln doesn't need her help anymore because... Uh, Lincoln observed Rita building uh, the step stool, so Rita says that Lincoln is capable of, um, of accomplishing any future woodworking projects. Lincoln, though, um, insists that um, his desire um, for Rita's help is because he enjoys the mother and son bonding between them, but Rita uh, doesn't believe Lincoln's claim, and um, and uh, says that it wouldn't be right for her to, um, uh, to try and complete all of um, Lincoln's projects. Rita then says, though, or yes, after that, um, Rita says that she, is, um, she trusts that Lincoln will be able to uh, accomplish this uh, project, and then Rita heads off to a different part of the Loud House. Um, Lincoln then uh, has another one of those symptoms that he describes earlier, and Lincoln um, doubts his ability to accomplish um, this woodworking project. Um, but then Lincoln gets an idea. He, he figures that maybe he can find a way to um, complete the project without having to actually perform any woodworking. So a little while later, um, or yes, the next scene uh, takes us to the, um, to the yard. Yes, the next scene takes us to the yard. And Lincoln tries to acquire uh, the birdhouse of the family's pet bird, Walt. Walt, though, is rather antagonistic about Lincoln taking the birdhouse. Lincoln tries to reason with Walt, saying that he's just borrowing the birdhouse for a little while, and he will return the birdhouse um, uh, after, he, um, after he accomplishes what he needs the birdhouse for. But Walt still acts rather antagonistic about this. Um, yes, Walt still acts rather antagonistic about this, even after letting Lincoln uh, borrow the uh, birdhouse. So the next day uh, rolls around, and Agnes Johnson is inspecting the uh, birdhouses um, of some of the students in her classroom. Um, like the step stools, um, most of the students seem to have had a... Yes, um, like the step stools, most of the students seem to have had a hard time building these birdhouses, and Agnes is impressed with uh, Walt's birdhouse, not realizing that Lincoln didn't actually uh, build this uh, birdhouse. Uh, but uh, yes, Lincoln um, just decides to play along and um, doesn't mention that he didn't actually build the birdhouse. So after that, um, yes, after that, um, the class eventually ends. And, um, and the students are leaving, but before Lincoln leaves, Agnes actually stops Lincoln, wondering if Lincoln uh, would like a chance to earn some extra credit. Uh, Lincoln says that um, he wouldn't turn down some extra credit. So Agnes um, reveals that the extra credit is that she wants Lincoln to build a dresser uh, quickly. Agnes explains that her mom is, um, is going to pay um, Agnes a visit over the weekend, 
and Agnes comments about how her mom uh, tends to complain about not having um, any place to um, put some girdles. Uh, and Agnes figured that, um, that Lincoln could build the dresser because she's under the impression that Lincoln is a master woodworker. And um, not wanting to, um, uh, yes, Lincoln becomes nervous and Lincoln doesn't want to give away that, um, or yes, Lincoln doesn't want to admit the truth. So Lincoln tries to come up with um, various um, uh, situations in order to um, justify why he can't build the, um, why he can't build the dresser. Um, uh, yes, um, first up, Lincoln says that he has a lot of homework. But Agnes says that um, Lincoln uh, doesn't have to worry about the homework uh, while he's um, building the dresser. Lincoln then uh, tries to claim that he needs to eat immediately after school for blood sugar related reasons. But Agnes assures Lincoln that she'd be willing to prepare a snack for Lincoln. Lincoln then uh, comments about how he has to walk the uh, family dog, Charles. Agnes um, uh, offers to um, have her dog walker uh, take care of Charles, uh, of walking Charles. Yes, Agnes says that she's willing to, um, uh, yes, Agnes offers to have her dog walker walk Charles for Lincoln. So Lincoln is out of um, possible um, outs uh, for this situation. So Agnes um, thinks that Lincoln is all set for being able to uh, build the, um, the dresser. And Lincoln is um, really nervous. So the next scene takes us to Agnes Johnson's house. Um, Agnes has brought Lincoln to the room uh, where the um, where the um, where the material and the blueprints for the dresser are. And um, Agnes um, says that she will leave Lincoln uh, to take care of building the dresser, uh, but Lincoln can uh, call out to her if uh, he needs anything. So after Agnes leaves. Um, Lincoln contacts Clyde over the walkie-talkie, and uh, Lincoln explains to Clyde um, that um, that he's um, he now has to build a dresser for Agnes Johnson very quickly. Clyde acknowledges that um, yes, Clyde says he doesn't want to be the person to bring this up, but he does bring up that Lincoln could have avoided this whole mess if he simply uh, built. Um, uh, a step stool himself, uh, so that way Agnes would see that Lincoln isn't the master woodworker that she believes him to be. And, um, and uh, Clyde saying this actually gives Lincoln an idea. Uh, yes, Clyde's comment actually reminds Lincoln of the um, hardware store, shoulda, coulda, woulda. And um, Lincoln says that, um, uh, that um, he can just uh, go and buy a dresser from uh, shoulda, coulda, woulda. So a little while later, Lincoln and Clyde are back at the Loud House. Um, or yes, Lincoln's back at the Loud House. Clyde is with him. They're in Lincoln's room. And um, Lincoln, uh, Lincoln um, gathers some money from, uh, from his piggy bank, uh, uh, admitting that... Um, that um, that a few months worth of allowance is going to be spent on this dresser, but Lincoln comments along the lines about how um, desperate times call for desperate measures. And after Lincoln gathers the money for the dresser, he notices Walt uh, in the hallway, and Walt is um, very impatient and rather antagonistic. Um, Walt is waiting for uh, his birdhouse to be resumed. Lincoln and Clyde are able to avoid um, Walt, and uh, Lincoln comments that he has to um, he has to make sure that he gets the birdhouse back sooner rather than uh, later. So next up, we do see Lincoln and Clyde have acquired a dresser from Shoulda Coulda Woulda, and um, they're they're pulling the dresser. Um, or yes, the dresser is tied to um, some rope and it's tied to a bike and um, they're using the bike in order to get the dresser to um, uh, Agnes Johnson's uh, house. And eventually, or yes, it's shown to be quite a struggle, but eventually Lincoln and Clyde are able to get the dresser to Agnes Johnson's house without Agnes um, seeing the uh, dresser. Um, uh, yes, they, so they arrive at Agnes Johnson's house without Agnes seeing them, 
but Clyde wonders um, uh, how they're going to get the dresser upstairs, especially without uh, letting Agnes see the dresser. So Lincoln then notices an open window and a clothesline. So so Lincoln figures that they can use the um, uh, yes they can use um, the clothesline. They can use the clothesline in order to uh, pull the dresser up. Yes, um, Lincoln and Clyde head upstairs and through the open window and using the clothesline, they're going to try and pull the dresser up into uh, the room uh, before Agnes Johnson uh, knows what's going on. But while they're trying to pull the dresser up, Agnes knocks on the door and says that she prepared a sandwich for Lincoln um, uh, remembering what Lincoln claimed earlier about, um, those blood sugar, or yes, um, remembering the blood sugar explanation that Lincoln gave about how he needs to eat right after, uh, school. Lincoln tries to tell, or yes, Lincoln politely says that, um, he's okay right now, not wanting Agnes to see them try and, uh, uh, pull the dresser up through the window, but Clyde comments about how the polite thing to do is to, um, is to accept the sandwich since Agnes prepared the sandwich for him. So Lincoln does uh, agree to go along with Clyde's suggestion um, and um, and um, request that Clyde uh, try to um, do what he can with pulling the dresser up while Lincoln uh, gets the sandwich. So Lincoln, so yeah, Lincoln tries to um, open the door, but not fully. Um, he tries to open the door only slightly so he can get the sandwich without Agnes seeing the dresser. And um, Lincoln also tries to claim that, um, uh, yes, so Lincoln thanks Agnes for the sandwich. And Lincoln tries to, um, tries to um, prevent Agnes from seeing what's in the room by saying that it's uh, bad luck to see the dresser before it's finished. Um, yes, those that's along the lines of what Lincoln says to try and convince Agnes not to uh, look in the room. So eventually, though, um, Lincoln is able to shut the door again after he gets the sandwich, and he admits to Clyde, it's a good sandwich. Uh, but Clyde is having a hard time trying to... Um, uh, pull up the uh, dresser by himself. So Lincoln quickly uh, proceeds to help Clyde with pulling the dresser up. Uh, and um, yes, they're making progress, um, even though they're also struggling. But unfortunately for Lincoln and Clyde, uh, Walt um, decided to fly around uh, Royal Woods. And uh, Walt sees, um, yes, Walt sees Lincoln and Clyde uh, trying to pull up the dresser, and because Walt is still angry about Lincoln not returning the birdhouse, Walt decides to um, get some vengeance on Lincoln by um, destroying the rope that's uh, pulling the um, that's pulling the uh, dresser up. So yes, um, Walt uh, destroys. So yes, um, Walt uh, proceeds to destroy the rope, and the dresser crashes to um, the ground. Agnes hears the noise heads outside and is surprised to see um, the dresser in ruins. And um, Lincoln and Clyde are in are still in the room and um, and Lincoln encourages Clyde to um, escape while he has the chance. But Clyde doesn't want to um, leave Lincoln to um, uh, deal with this situation by himself. Clyde actually offers to um, pretend to have or yes, Clyde actually offers to claim that he destroyed uh, the dresser out of uh, jealousy, but Lincoln, or yes, Lincoln says he appreciates that Clyde um, is willing to um, is willing to lie for his Lincoln's sake. But Lincoln says that it wouldn't be right for him to let Clyde um, um, uh, to let Clyde take the blame for his Lincoln's own uh, own uh, mistake. And Lincoln decides that it's best for him to uh, admit the truth to Agnes. So some time passes by and Lincoln has summarized to, or yes, Lincoln has admitted the truth to Agnes and he also summarized um, the situation with the uh, step stool and uh, the birdhouse. And Lincoln also um, apologizes for uh, lying to Agnes. Agnes admits that she is very disappointed saying that um, this isn't in character for Lincoln. Uh, Agnes then says that um, that all Lincoln can do for now is um, clean up uh, the ruins of the um, of the dresser and return home. And Lincoln does agree to do so. But before he leaves, Lincoln sees the still um, still angry Walt, and uh, Lincoln requests if he can have the birdhouse back um, since Walt is still angry. 
So a little while later, Lincoln and Clyde have arrived at a dumpster and they're throwing the ruins of the dresser into this uh, dumpster. And, um, and Lincoln uh, still feels guilty about lying, but figures he had no other choice in the matter uh, because he's just not talented when it comes to woodworking. Clyde shows sympathy towards um, Lincoln again. Uh, Clyde, yes, bring, yes, Clyde brings up how this reminds him of uh, his, his own experiences trying to blow up balloons. Uh, Clyde admits that he tried to blow up balloons several times, but he just wasn't able to accomplish this. Um, he always passed out every time he tried to, um, tried to uh, blow up balloons. Even when Clyde was in the ambulance from the flashback we saw earlier, uh, Clyde said he still tried to blow up balloons, but he still continued to be uh, unsuccessful. And he even tried to blow up a latex glove. Uh, but after hearing this, um, Lincoln actually says that Clyde um, inspired him. Uh, yes, Lincoln says that um, that um, or yes, Lincoln says that he gives Clyde credit for actually trying to um, uh, trying to conquer his fear of blowing up balloons. Uh, Lincoln admits he didn't really try to overcome his fear of woodworking, and um, and uh, Clyde though um, still shows sympathy to Lincoln. Uh, Yes, Clyde tells Lincoln that he shouldn't be uh, he shouldn't beat himself up over it over this, and um, and Clyde says um, says that he saw a poster in Doctor Lopez's office that says something along the lines about how mistakes are a chance for others to grow um, in life, and Lincoln um, thinks that um, that poster in Doctor Lopez's office has a point. And uh, Lincoln says that they're going to um, need to get some wood back. Clyde um, notices that there's ketchup on some of the wood that they threw out, but Clyde is willing to go along with what Lincoln is saying. Uh, or yes, um, Clyde is willing to go along with uh, Lincoln's request. So the next day rolls around, and Lincoln enters, um, enters Agnes Johnson's classroom. And um, Lincoln... Uh, Lincoln reveals to Agnes that he actually did take the time to build a step stool. And like uh, his fellow students, um, the step stool, or yes, it's like his fellow students, it's clear that Lincoln had a difficult time building this step stool. And Lincoln says he doesn't expect Agnes to, um, uh, to change Lincoln's grade. Lincoln said that he did this uh, for the sake of proving to himself that he at least tried to um, that he at least tried to um, build a step stool. Uh, Agnes admits that she hadn't actually um, hadn't actually um, uh, gone over the grading for the woodworking projects just yet. But uh, she takes a moment to look at the step stool, and uh, Agnes says that she is proud of Lincoln for actually um, trying to uh, build a step stool, and. Um, and she even mistakes the uh, ketchup for uh, blood, but Lincoln is quick to clarify that uh, it's not blood, it's ketchup, and he thinks there's also possibly, or yes, Lincoln thinks there's a possibility that there might be barbecue sauce uh, on the step stool too. Agnes Johnson decides in any case that Lincoln's uh, grade will still be a passing grade, and Lincoln uh, does appreciate this, and he returns to his seat. And, um, and uh, Lincoln and Clyde, um, uh, yes, Lincoln and Clyde um, give each other a thumbs up after, um, after, um, after uh, Agnes says that she's going to give Lincoln a passing grade. So Agnes then uh, gets the attention of the students in her classroom. She says that the next topic they're going to discuss in class is, um, is um, the clowning arts. That's what she uh, calls um, this next topic. And she says they're going to start with blowing up balloons. So uh, Clyde starts to panic about how they're going to blow up balloons in class now. And that is how we end this segment. So this was the B segment for the, um, for the um, 13th episode of uh, season three of The Loud House. So after this segment, we're halfway through um, season three now. Or yes, um. As of this video, we've now discussed um, half of season three uh, of The Loud House on this channel. So, yes, we have one more. Yes, we have the later half of season three to discuss on the channel afterwards. But before we do that, 
why don't we talk about um, this segment, or yes, let's go to the thoughts section for um, this particular segment. Now this segment, um, yeah, I would, yes, for this segment, I would say that this is another weaker segment for um, season three. Um, although I do think that this segment, um, I do prefer this segment over its sibling segment, um, although I still think it's overall a weaker segment for season three. And uh, part of the reason for that is, or yes, part of the reason why I feel this segment was on the weaker side was because uh, we don't really get much of an explanation for something. Uh, yes, throughout the course of the segment, we find out that Lincoln has a fear of woodworking. Clyde actually um, outright calls it a fear at one point during this segment. But, um, uh, but we never really find out why Lincoln has a fear of woodworking exactly. I mean, or, or yes, we, we know that Lincoln doesn't have a talent when it comes to woodworking, or Lincoln's not very talented when it comes to woodworking, but... I would say not having a talent for for an area of expertise isn't really the same as um, having a fear of something, and that's what I found confusing. We never uh, received a, an actual explanation for why Lincoln was afraid of woodworking, and um, to be honest, this actually reminded me of um, of a King of the Hill episode. Um, yes, there's a King of the Hill episode called "It Came from the Garage." And in that episode, we the viewers find out that the main character of King of the Hill, Hank Hill, has a fear of bats. However, the episode never actually gave us an explanation for why Hank is afraid of bats. Yes, throughout the course of It Came From the Garage, we never find out why exactly Hank Hill is afraid of bats. We never get a proper explanation for it. And that's um, essentially, um, uh, and that's what reminded me of... Um, or yes, this segment, um, What Would Lincoln Do, reminded me of the King of the Hill episode, It Came From the Garage, because in It Came From the Garage, we never really get an actual answer for why Hank is afraid of bats. And in this segment, we never get an actual answer for why Lincoln is, um, is afraid of woodworking. Now, to be fair, it is true that in real life, um, it is possible for people to have irrational fears. Um, having said that, though, there's usually um, there's usually still some sort of explanation for why someone would have an irrational fear, um, a traumatic experience being it, uh, an example, or yes, um, a traumatic experience would be an example of why someone might develop an irrational fear. And while I do think um, while I do think it was unfortunate that, or yes, while I do think that it was, um, while I do think that it was um, uh, a bit of a um, or yes, I do think that it was um, unfortunate that it came from the garage, never bothered to give us an explanation for why Hank was afraid of bats. At least um, you can come up with some reasonable conclusions for why Hank might be afraid of bats. Um, or yes, it's um, yes, it's possible. Uh, people could at least um, speculate on the possibilities for why Hank might be afraid of bats. Um, but woodworking... Yeah, woodworking definitely seemed like something that definitely required uh, an explanation for that. Um, throughout the course of the segment, or yes, essentially, uh, one could summarize the segment by saying Lincoln is afraid of woodworking because reasons. We never actually get a, um, uh, yes, um, the segment could be summarized along the lines of Lincoln is afraid of woodworking because reasons. And I definitely think that we needed more of an explanation for why Lincoln um, was afraid of woodworking, and, um, and, uh, it, it especially stands out because, um, other entries of, um, yes, yeah, some other entries, um, for the Loud House have, uh, provided viewers with backstory for certain details, so that's why I thought it was strange that they didn't bother to offer some backstory for why Lincoln is afraid of woodworking, Oh, and while I'm on the topic of the King of the Hill episode, it came from the garage. Um, in that episode, uh, we find out that um, Bill Dotrieve um, has a fear of balloons. So that actually is similar to um, uh, Clyde's fear of balloons in this segment, or at least blowing up balloons. Although, um, although there was an earlier King of the Hill episode that at least hinted at a, a reason for why Bill would have a fear of balloons. 
Um, here for Clyde, um, yeah, like with Lincoln and Woodworking, um, we don't really get much of a reason for why Clyde is afraid of blowing up balloons exactly. It just feels like the segment was saying Clyde has a fear of blowing up balloons because reasons. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of um, strange that they never really bothered to offer some backstory about those, um, about those uh, fears. Um, otherwise, though, um, now, while I do think that this segment did have its weaker moments, I still think this segment did have some good moments to it, even if I did think it was on the weaker side for a Season 3 entry. And one of the things I appreciated about this segment was I think this segment was an example of portraying Lincoln in the wrong without him being hit with disproportionate retribution. Uh, yes, I have brought up before that um, I'm not usually, I'm not really a fan of the entries of the Loud House where Lincoln either uh, gets all the blame for a conflict he's only partially at fault for or where he gets hit with um, disproportionate retribution when he's in the wrong here, though, Lincoln didn't get hit with disproportionate retribution. Um, Lincoln was presented being in the wrong, but it didn't feel like he was um, made out to be the bad guy necessarily, and it didn't feel like he was hit with disproportionate retribution. Um, yes, um, it, yes, it was shown that it was wrong for Lincoln to deceive Agnes um, about uh, accomplishing the woodworking projects, um, but, uh, again, Lincoln wasn't necessarily portrayed to be a bad guy about it. Um, it was just more of showing that, um, it felt more like an example of a good person making some bad choices because Lincoln does learn his lesson by the end of the segment. Um, Lincoln does admit that he lied. He does apologize for it. And Lincoln actually does go through and at least tries to, um, face his fear of woodworking. Now, at the end of the segment, they don't really clarify if Lincoln necessarily overcame his fear of woodworking um, or if he just faced it. So I don't know if they're going to bring it up again in a later entry or not. I don't think they do in the rest of Season 3. I'll have to refresh my memory when I rewatch the later entries of Season 3. But from what I recall, I don't think the rest of Season 3 brings up Lincoln's fear of woodworking. Um, but maybe they'll bring it up again in season four or season five, because I do think that's also, um, a notable point that should be brought up. Just because someone faces their fears doesn't automatically mean that they've conquered their fears. And this was actually brought up back in season one. In the season one segment, along came a sister. Lenny did, uh, faced her fear of spiders when she protected, um, the class pet spider, uh, from the exterminator. But even by the end of the segment, uh, Lenny was shown to still be afraid of spiders. So, yes, Along Came a Sister was a good example of facing your fears not being, um, facing your fears being different from conquering your fears. So, I don't know if Lincoln conquered his fear of woodworking, but, um, but he at least faced it. That much we know. So, maybe a later entry will clarify that. But otherwise, um... Otherwise, um, yes, that's right. We do also receive a little backstory. Um, yes, this segment gives us a little insight, at least for um, Agnes Johnson. We do find out, um, yeah, we never actually get to meet Agnes's mom, but we find out that Agnes's mom complains about not having a place to um, put her girdle. So, yeah, it's a small detail, but it gives us a little insight on um, on one of the uh, family members for a character who isn't part of the show's um, main families. Um, yes, for a character who's not a member of the Loud family, who's not a member of the McBride family, and who's not a member of the joint Santiago and Casa Grande uh, family, um, yes, I did like that. I liked how we had a little insight on a character's uh, family member, and this character uh, wasn't a member of the Loud family, the McBride family, or the joint Santiago and Casa Grande family. And otherwise, um, otherwise, um, yes, that's right. We do get to see uh, Rita in this segment. Um, yes, we see Rita. Uh, yes, Rita is very skilled when it comes to woodworking. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe earlier entries actually did um, highlight that. Yes, I believe earlier entries did show uh, Rita performing some woodworking related activities. So this segment actually gets to bring that detail to attention. And I thought that was um, another cool thing. Um, they, they, uh, there was a detail we've seen about a character earlier on and they actually brought some attention to it or they actually decided to 
uh, bring some focus to it. And we had that here with Rita offering to help Lincoln with the step stool and eventually um, uh, hoping that, um, or yes, Rita's um, intentions, or yes, Rita helped Lincoln with the step stool and then figured that Lincoln um, would be able to handle uh, future woodworking projects. Um, that's right, yes, Rita, yes, um, Rita, uh, uh, yes, Rita not wanting to, um, or yes, Rita, um, Rita's comments about how, um, how she trusts Lincoln to um, take care of woodworking after he observed her build the step stool did remind me of season one a bit uh, in the sense of how season one uh, had the loud parents mostly um, out of focus. Or yes, the loud parents uh, weren't, really, uh, weren't really the main focus in season one or the loud parents were more like a... Um, the loud parents had a lesser role in season one compared to season two and season three. And the season one segment, Chores and Peace, did give an in-universe explanation, uh, being that the loud parents want the loud siblings to solve their own problems. So, yeah, that sort of reminded me of that season one detail when Rita uh, built the step stool with Lincoln, or yes, built the step stool, or yes, um, yes, Rita helping Lincoln with the step stool project and then building the step stool for Lincoln with the intent that Lincoln... Uh, would um, would learn from observing her build the step stool and then be able to solve his own problems afterwards. That did remind me of that season one detail. And otherwise, um, oh yes, we do get to see a little bit of um, Walt the Bird. Um, yes, Walt the Bird um, uh, received a bit of attention in this segment. And um, we do see a little bit more about how Walt is rather... Um, is rather um, ill-mannered, or yes, Walt is rather antagonistic and um, and uh, very impatient. And um, and Walt actually was, um, and yes, um, part of the reason why Lincoln's deception failed was because of Walt having a um, having a vindictive side to him. And oh, while I'm on the top, or yes, um, yes, while I'm on the topic about the uh, dresser being destroyed. Um, something I did like about this segment also was how Clyde um, was um, the heartwarming moment regarding uh, Lincoln and Clyde figuring out what to do now that Agnes saw the destroyed dresser. Clyde was actually willing to take the blame for Lincoln's sake, uh, and I thought that was heartwarming. And I also thought it was heartwarming how Lincoln uh, didn't want Clyde to um, take the blame for his, Lincoln's own mistakes. I thought that was a good way of highlighting um, the bond uh, Lincoln and Clyde have as friends. Clyde was willing to um, uh, was willing to take the heat uh, for Lincoln's sake, but Lincoln was unwilling to let Clyde um, uh, was unwilling to let Clyde take the fall for um, his Lincoln's own mistake. So I thought that was a nice detail too. So overall, yes, um, uh, I thought this segment was on the uh, weaker side for season three. Um, mostly because um, we never really get a proper explanation for why Lincoln uh, has a fear of woodworking and uh, to a lesser extent why Clyde has a fear of blowing up balloons. Um, it definitely felt like um, those were um, details that um, we should have received some backstory on, but I suppose some fan works will try and uh, offer their own explanations. And while I do think that was one of the weaker points, or I think the fact that we never got a proper explanation for those fears uh, was what made this segment a bit on the weaker side to me, I still think this segment did have some good points to it. Um, like I said, I do think that this segment was an example of portraying Lincoln to be in the wrong without making him out to be the bad guy and without uh, uh, putting him on the receiving end of disproportionate retribution. Lincoln felt like... Um, a good kid at heart who made some bad choices, but ultimately uh, owned up to um, his mistakes, um, apologized for his mistakes, and um, did try to uh, make amends for his mistakes. And I also did like um, learning a little bit more about, um, uh, a bit about Agnes Johnson's family, even if it was only brief. Um, I did like that we got to see a bit more of Walt the Bird, and I did think that it was a cool detail how Rita um, how Rita's woodworking skills were brought to uh, attention in this segment after being uh, uh, seen before in earlier entries. And like I said, I do think that this segment was another good example 
of um, Lincoln and Clyde's bond as uh, best friends. So, yeah, um, overall, I would say that's about it for this segment. On the weaker side, I would call it a weaker season three entry, but I still think it had its good points, and I do prefer it over its sibling segment. So, I would say that's about it for this segment. So, as of this video, uh, we've now discussed the B segment for episode 65 of The Loud House on this channel. Take care, and until next time...